Pursuant to Standing Order 98, the member has 12 minutes for a presentation. The member for Kingston and the Islands. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I would like to begin by recognizing the Native Women's Association of Canada, NWAC, who was one of the first organizations to break the silence and shed light on the issue of disproportionate violence against Aboriginal women and girls with the Sisters in Spirit project. NWAC gave faces and voices to the statistics, to the sisters, mothers, daughters, cousins, and aunts whose lives were tragically cut short. For the past month, I have displayed NYAC's faceless doll panels in my constituency office and traveled the Kingston community with them to help spread awareness about this issue. Every faceless doll is unique and was created to give a visual representation of each of the known cases of missing and murdered Aboriginal women in Canada who have become faceless victims of crime. My visits with representatives of the Aboriginal community to school classrooms and organizations in Kingston and the Islands were emotionally overwhelming experiences. It brought me yet closer to imagining the lives of these beautiful women and inspired me to bring this motion forward. One of these women was Nicole. Nicole was murdered in Winnipeg in October of 2003 at the age of 32. She left behind three beautiful children aged 9, 7, and 16 months to be looked after by their grandmother, a constituent of mine, who bravely shared her story at the Tyendinaga Mohawk Territory's Sisters in Spirit Vigil this fall. Her story is one of far too many. I know that the members of this House are well aware of this ongoing human rights issue in Canada. Today, I call on the members of the House to support my motion for a national public inquiry for three main reasons. While violence against all women worldwide continues to be a grave concern that deserves our utmost attention, we must recognize the disproportionate representation of female Aboriginal victims in Canada. In Canada, the homicide rate is almost seven times higher for Aboriginal women than non-Aboriginal women. In Canada, Aboriginal women are 3.5 times more likely to be victims of violence than non-Aboriginal women. In Canada, Aboriginal women are almost three times more likely to be killed by a stranger than non-Aboriginal women. From 2005 to 2010, the Native Women's Association of Canada's Sisters in Spirit Initiative uncovered 582 cases of murdered and missing Aboriginal women and girls. In May of this year, the RCMP released their own report, which examined the issue across all police jurisdictions in Canada. The report found 1,181 police recorded incidents of Aboriginal female homicides and missing Aboriginal females between 1980 and 2012, more than double the initial NYAC findings. The RCMP research shows that 16% of all female homicide victims are Aboriginal. Astonishing when one considers that Aboriginal women represent only 4% of the national female population. The NYAC report showed us that just over half of these homicides involve women and girls under the age of 31. 17% are aged 18 years or younger. 
88% were mothers. The second reason, this issue transcends communities, provincial borders, and partisan lines. And as such, we must address it as a nation. We have failed to close the gap between Indigenous and non-Indigenous Canadians in healthcare, housing, education, employment, and social services. We sought to assimilate Aboriginal peoples into our own image, to eliminate their individual identities and shame their cultures as inferior to ours. Yet Aboriginals remain strong, resilient, and proud. A national inquiry will begin to rebuild Canada's international reputation in the realm of human rights. In July of this year, a report of the United Nations Special Rapporteur on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples examined the situation of Indigenous peoples in Canada. The following is a quote from that report. It is difficult to reconcile Canada's well-developed legal framework and general prosperity with the human rights problems faced by Indigenous peoples in Canada that have reached crisis proportions in many respects. A national inquiry such as the Royal Commission on Aboriginal Peoples and the 2008 Truth and Reconciliation Commission of Canada will help increase public awareness and understanding of the issue and help uncover the many underlying systemic and social causes that make Aboriginal women and girls more vulnerable to violent situations. It is undeniable that factors such as the general impacts of colonization, residential schools, the 60s scoop, institutional and individual racism and sexism, poverty, addiction, insecure housing, and lack of economic opportunities are some of the underlying causes that increase Aboriginal women's vulnerability to violence. However, a national inquiry would help determine the impact of each factor and identify how those factors produce or reinforce the economic, social, and political marginalization of Aboriginal women in Canada. Third, a national inquiry will give voice to Aboriginal families by providing an opportunity to share their public stories and learn from their experiences in a public forum. It will ask and answer difficult questions. It will gather data and provide independent analysis. Listening to the testimony of the families, the service and care agencies, the police and the input of advocacy groups will help to identify where mistakes were made and begin the discussion on the necessary long-term solutions. Revealing the underlying causes of Aboriginal women's vulnerability to violence can also help raise public awareness and increase political will. Ultimately, it can result in meaningful action focused on providing resources that mitigate the circumstances that lead to violence against women, Aboriginal women and girls. This approach will help uncover instances where Aboriginal women were treated differently and identify the ways as we, as a society, have failed these women. It can help begin the break, to break down the mistrust that exists between Aboriginal communities and our public institutions. A national public inquiry will provide a degree of closure to the families of the victims and will help facilitate healing and reconciliation. It is time to prioritize Aboriginal women and girls' safety and address the underlying causes that increase their vulnerability and exposure to violence. Each one of us here, as policymakers, has a responsibility to take action on this issue. Begin by taking action here today. It is imperative that we show solid leadership on an issue as a country. 
I'm exceptionally pleased that we have invested $2 million over two years to support the Joint Working Group on Violence Against Aboriginal Women. This group includes five Aboriginal organizations and ten ministries. No one has a monopoly on caring for their constituents. Since being in this House, I have always been so impressed with how all members from all parties care for their constituents. Joignez-vous à moi aujourd'hui et faites preuve de leadership et soutenant l'appel de l'Organisation Nationale des Autochtones. Join me today and show leadership by supporting the National Aboriginal Organization's call to our federal government for a meaningful and inclusive national and public inquiry that seeks the counsel of Aboriginal peoples and examines the underlying causes that increase Aboriginal women's vulnerability to violence. It is plain and simply the right thing to do. Miigwech, merci beaucoup, thank you.